This is your video on how to perform trach care. So we're going to start off with our supplies. We're going to get a trach care kit and I've gone ahead and opened it up and laid out all the supplies so you can see what to expect. When you open up your kit, you'll notice that there are three compartments. Now, different packages will look a little different. Some will have a bucket that you can actually remove and put off to the side, but this one is packaged with the three buckets separate in one section. Within the kit, you will have a trach dressing, which is a fenestrated, or it's got a slice through it, gauze. It will have pieces of gauze, a trach tie, which honestly is not needed anymore because we have Velcro commercially available ties. You'll have a wire brush, Q-tips, pipe cleaners, sterile gloves, and your sterile drape. This particular kit came packaged with hydrogen peroxide, but most oftentimes you're gonna have to get a bottle of hydrogen peroxide um, in addition to your kit. This package also came with a very small sterile saline bottle, but again, I went ahead and got another one because most times you will have to get another saline bottle as well. So now we're going to perform trach care. So I wanted to go over the different parts of the trach first. First off, you notice the oxygen delivery system that we have on the patient. This is called a trach collar. All it is is an oxygen face mask, except rather than being over the nose and the mouth, it's directly over the trach. So this is just an oxygen mask and it's called a trach collar. It has a snap, so we'll remove that so we can look at the trach itself. This one, there's a lot of writing on trach, so you just have to know where to look. Over here on this side, which I know you can't see very well, but this says no cuff. So there's not a cuff on this trach, meaning that there's nothing on the inside to hold this trach in place. The only thing that's holding this trach in place are these ties right here. So they have to be very snug, otherwise the patient can cough very hard and the trach can come out. This On this side, it tells you what size it is. So right here, it tells me it is a number six. So I see right there, it's a number six trach. Um, usually in the hospital, we have sixes and eights for adults. This one, you see the aquamarine writing on it and it says lock. This lets me know it twists to lock and unlock. So there it's locked, now it's unlocked and I can take it out. This is called the inner cannula. This is the outer cannula. The patient can still breathe with this in, even if you take this out. This is your safety device. So that if the patient were to get some sort of mucus plug or secretion to block their airway, you can take this out and the patient can still breathe. With this type of trach tube, this requires trach care and usually twice a day cleaning, sometimes every eight hour cleaning. So this one is a non-disposable. A disposable inner cannula looks like this. It has these little flanges on the side that you can grab and pinch. Trachs that have inner cannulas like this, these are disposable so they can be thrown away and replaced every day or twice a day. The other thing you may see is a red cap and this is an entire tube you may just see it's called a button and it's red if you see red that means that it is blocked off so if i were to put this in the patient's trach i have now completely blocked the trach this is for someone who is doing very well and they're getting ready to have their take trach their trach taken out The last thing I want to show you is called the obturator. This should be in your patient's room somewhere. A lot of times it's in a Ziploc bag and it's taped up to the side of the bed or it's in a Ziploc bag and in a drawer in the patient's room. This is if the patient were to cough their trach out, this fits actually in there. So if they were to cough this part out, this outer cannula, this is how you can replace it. So this is for safety only, and it's called an obturator. So now we're going to do trach care. So I have my trach care kit, so I'm going to open it away from me. 
and this is what it looks like when you open it. The gloves are just sitting there. Yes, they look like that. Most of the time, they look like a big crumbled mess, but we made ours look pretty today. So I'll turn it around and put my sterile gloves on. When you put on your sterile gloves, you want to make sure that you're away from your area so that you don't touch anywhere on the outside of your sterile field. So now I can touch just on the inside. So I'm going to slide that over there. I have my drape. Shiny side down. So that folded up, so I'm not going to use that area right there. I'm just going to stay over here now. This is my saline. I'm just going to empty all of my contents onto my sterile field. Now for this demonstration, they gave us some hydrogen peroxide and they gave us some saline. Most times in the hospital, you have to get your own. So at this point in time, I'm ready to contaminate my non-dominant hand. So I'll come over here to the saline or peroxide that was non-sterile and open that. Making sure I don't come around. And you're gonna fill up all three buckets with your fluid. In the hospital, you would use peroxide as well and I'm not gonna use that for today. So now with my non-dominant hand, I'm going to remove the oxygen mask, twist the inner cannula, pull down, and on a real patient, you need to turn towards yourself as you come out because most of the time their chest is a little too close. So I'll pull that out and drop it straight into my first bucket. Always give your patient their oxygen back. We do not want them to be deprived of oxygen while we are performing this procedure. My non-dominant, my contaminated hand can only touch this outside portion. This part is to remain sterile. So with my wire brush, I'm going to put it in my solution and clean, clean, clean. I'm done with the wire brush. Now I'll rinse in my other bucket. Tap. I can move the oxygen now because the sterile part is over with. And lock it back in place. That's the only thing that's sterile about this procedure. Now I'm ready to clean the outside. So with the last bucket that I haven't used, I get my Q-tips and I want, making sure they don't take away their oxygen, I want to go behind the neck plate and wipe right where the trach actually goes into the patient's neck and throw that away. And then I'll do the same for the underside and throw that away. You have a lot of gauze in your kit and this is for if a patient has a lot of secretions, you can take one of your gauze wipes, dip it in your saline, and clean up any extra goopies and yuckiness that may be around the trach. What else I like to do is to dampen one, and these get really yucky sometimes to come in and clean this really good. And then the only thing left to do is take our trach dressing, our fenestrated trach dressing, 
and this goes under the trach itself. Be careful when you are doing this not to pull on the trach because it can do what that one just did, come right on out and give them their oxygen back. 